Have you ever wondered what goes on in the brain when people experience hallucinations? It's like digging into the depths of a mystery novel, where neurotransmitters and different parts of the brain play the lead roles in crafting these sometimes scary experiences. Welcome to Brain Explained. In this video, we'll see the different types of hallucinations and uncover the mechanisms behind hallucinations and how the brain along with neurotransmitters influence its experience. First things first, what exactly are hallucinations? Well, simply put, they're perceptions that occur without any external stimulus. In other words, you see, hear, smell, taste, or feel something that isn't actually there. It's like your brain is putting on its own private show, complete with sights and sounds that nobody else can perceive. Also, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM-5, defines hallucinations as perception-like experiences that occur without an external stimulus and which are vivid and clear with the full force and impact of normal perceptions, though not under voluntary control. This means that even though hallucinations seem real, they're not. They are simply caused by chemical reactions or abnormalities in the brain. There are five major types of hallucinations. Auditory or sound hallucinations are the most common types. They involve hearing sounds that aren't real, like music, footsteps, or doors banging. Some even hear voices when no one has actually spoken. The voices may be positive, neutral, or negative, commanding them to do something that may cause harm to themselves or others. Visual or sight hallucinations, on the other hand, involve seeing things that aren't real, like objects, shapes, people, animals, or lights. For tactile hallucinations, you feel touch on your body or movement in your body that's not real. It could be feelings like bugs crawling on your skin or your internal organs moving around. Olfactory hallucinations have to do with smell. They involve experiencing smells that don't exist or that no one else can smell. And for gustatory hallucinations, you begin to taste things that are not there, and they are often strange or unpleasant. Some neurological conditions may also cause hallucinations. Parkinson's disease, for instance, causes a part of the brain to deteriorate, causing more severe symptoms over time. Because of that, about 20% to 40% of people with Parkinson's disease experience hallucinations. Schizophrenia is the most notable when talking about concerning mental health conditions that are associated with hallucinations. Schizophrenia refers to both a single condition and a spectrum of conditions that fall under the category of psychosis-related disorders. With this condition, you experience some form of disconnection from reality, which can include hallucinations. Generally, hallucinations happen from chemical reactions in the body or changes in the brain. These chemicals are called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are like the brain's messengers, zipping around and delivering important signals between neurons. And when it comes to hallucinations, a few neurotransmitters steal the spotlight. The most prominent neurotransmitter is dopamine. As the brain's feel-good chemical, Dopamine is involved in all sorts of things, from pleasure and motivation to movement. So when dopamine levels go haywire, it can lead to hallucinations. Serotonin is another prominent neurotransmitter. This neurotransmitter serves an all-important role as the brain's mood stabilizer. Another major neurotransmitter is glutamate. Think of glutamate as the brain's accelerator pedal. This brain chemical is involved in excitatory signaling, which means it revs things up. On the flip side, we have GABA, the brain's calming neurotransmitter. When GABA levels dip, it can lead to excessive brain activity, potentially triggering hallucinations. Now that you've seen how neurotransmitters are associated with hallucinations, let's shine the spotlight on the different parts of the brain that are also involved in hallucination. The visual cortex is located in the occipital lobe in the brain and is responsible for processing visual information. So when things go bad here, it can manifest as something as little as seeing colorful patterns to full-blown scenes that aren't actually there. Next up, we have the auditory cortex, which is located in the temporal lobe and where sound takes center stage. When this area misfires, it can lead to hearing voices or sounds that nobody else can hear. The temporal lobe is like the brain's memory vault and emotion center rolled into one. And when it gets a little too excited, it can produce complex hallucinations that are rich in detail and emotion. Last but not least, we have the prefrontal cortex, the brain's control center. When this region isn't pulling its weight, it can result in hallucinations that feel all too real, blurring the line between imagination and reality. So how do all these players come together to create the experience of hallucinations? Picture this, neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, glutamate, and GABA are the conductors, orchestrating activity in different parts of the brain like the visual cortex, auditory cortex, temporal lobe, and prefrontal cortex. 
So when everything is in harmony, our perceptions are clear and accurate. But when there's a discordant note, a spike in dopamine here, a dip in serotonin there, it can throw the whole system off balance, leading to hallucinations. Whether it's a visual extravaganza, an auditory spectacle, or a journey through memory and emotion, hallucinations offer a glimpse into the complex inner workings of our minds. And by understanding the underlying mechanisms behind hallucinations, more effective treatments can be discovered. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.